Well, hello, and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on your bros. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy you Monday. Fresh new back? week. I'm very excited. Why would I not be more than at tip top excitement today? Are you excited? Yeah, thrilled. Um, everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, it is Monday. Very excited. Very excited. Because the Bravo schedule has changed, which puts us back in the land of real housewives of Potomac. Now, listen, Potomac's one of our favorite shows overall. They've had a stinker of a season. We all know it. You know, I won't sit here and harp on it. But uh, it has been nice taking a break <laughs> from Potomac. But, man, we came back at quite an episode because it's very dramatic at the end. Yes. Um, but before we get to any of that stuff, we are going to do a live show in L.A. in a couple of months in May for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. You don't have to buy a festival pass for that. So if you're in L.A., just come. It's going to be super fun. It's a smaller house, so we're just going to hang out with you guys and have a good time for that whole night. Um, and it's in Hollywood, so it's easy. And you get the tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com. Also, we're going to be doing our European stint in London, Birmingham, and Dublin, and that's going to be at the end of May, and so you can get tickets for that. Also, guess where? Watchwhatcrappens.com. That's also where you'll find links to our Patreon, which is where you can get this video. Hi! And Hi. also our bonus episodes. Who knows what we're going to do this week? We just don't know. Probably a trailer for something, I would imagine, like probably Jersey. I don't know. Something that's coming up. But this week here at Crappens has changed because we're back to Potomac. We're back to Below Deck this week. We've got a new show coming out called The Valley which is Bravo's spinoff of Vanderpump Rules to showcase Jax and Kristen and all the people they fired before and canceled. So it's the zombie Bravo undead. It's the undead version of Bravo. And we're going to be here with that this week as well. So what's the whole week? Come on back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be a fun time. And then today, of course, as you mentioned, we're going to be diving back into Potomac. Um, let's see. What have we missed since the last time we did an episode? They went on a trip. Where are they? Even? They went to Dominican Republic, right? No. Where did the they go DR, again? Yes. They yeah, they sure went to did. Dominican Republic. Uh huh. And they had a great time. And now they're back. And we're we're resuming. That that's the recap. <laughs> that's that's where we're at. I'm. By the way, I have to apologize to the audience ahead of time. I had total brain fog today. I had very vicious. Uh, uh, I said brain poisoning, food poisoning. So I'm like depleted of liquids and therefore I am just like trying my best to formulate senses. So I apologize if things come out of my mouth that make zero sense. Well, I think we're all used to it by now, okay? We're, <laughs> we're a couple of dodo birds who, um, no matter what's going on on our insides, we've got constant diarrhea of the mouth, okay? Half the time oh, we that's know true. What's us, so I think the audience is going to be just fine. Okay, I don't mind so making more fun. <laughs> let's go to... Uh, Real Housewives of Potomac. Now, here's the funniest thing to me about this show. They are the biggest offenders in this. All of the Housewives shows say hello. I mean, that is really one of the... It's bigger than vagina vagina waxing, which, by the way, we got some vagina lasering last week, so I'd like to yeah. thank you guys for that as well. Okay? You're right. But uh, all of the Housewives do these certain plots, right? Like the vagina lasering, the whatever. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that they do that makes us crazy is the hellos, where they have nothing else going on, so they just say hello for 10 minutes and that is so this episode it was half yes. the episode was them saying hello it's like okay we're going bowling oh mia's coming in dun 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 mia's in slow motion and <laughs> wow. like a dress that's the color of slacks and then she comes in and everyone's like mia hi <laughs> mia you look so hi. pretty like, hi, hi ladies hi girls and then maybe there might be some commentary about like mia came in looking like she was ready to party tonight and then it's like then you have like five different people weighing in like when mia parties she just parties really hard yeah she's like a bit of a partier yeah she's like she parties a lot and you're like wow it's been 15 minutes and all that's happened is mia's literally today they didn't even do those little lines it was just like look it's mia hi mia and then dun, 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 dun. it's robin getting out of a car walking very slowly oh my god it's robin hi robin <laughs> hi girl <laughs> Hi, Robin, you look so pretty. Oh, my God, you look so pretty, too. You guys, Giselle's coming in. Da -na 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 -na. Slow motion Giselle coming in in some terrible outfit of the day. Oh, my God, Giselle! It's Giselle! Oh, man. 
My you know, God, there were literally for five minutes and then they do it in the next scene and then they do it in the next scene. Oh my, fire everybody. Just fire everybody at this point. You know that they were really stretching for content when they even gave Shasha a slow motion walk into the restaurant. I was like, are we really having a slow motion Shasha walk right now? Actually, Ben, that was pretty rude because that was just Shasha's walk. <laughs> it wasn't even That's slowed just, down. It was just her walking. <laughs> it was just Shasha coming. Very, very slowly. <laughs> Her hoverboard. Her hoverboard ran out of It was on her hoverboard. Thatha. Is that a joke? Is that a pun? It's Thatha. This season, I'm going to have a champagne womb and a hoverboard. Hey, girls. Well, Thatha did have a crab boil last week on the show. So, an unseasoned crab boil. Unseasoned. Congrats. Congrats on your shitty crab boil. That was the shittiest crab boil. I mean, you could taste how bad that crab was. You could just look at people's faces and be like, wow, what a disappointing boil, man. Yeah, that, that really is true. Um, I did enjoy, she did slam the table last week um, because she was trying really hard to get Candace and Robin to uh, mend their their rift. And I just liked, was it Giselle who was like, we've got to do something to make sure Cherise stops banging tables. They showed like <laughs> a montage of Cherise banging tables. <laughs> that was funny. Cherise just gets <laughs> drunk and comes in and slams on tables. That's, that's her <laughs> That's her thing. Uh, okay, so today, so... Um, oh, another another thing that's happened that's leading up to today's episode is Giselle and Ashley having a fashion line. One of the funniest fucking things I've ever heard. I mean, because they notoriously are both terrible at fashion, you know? Right. Um, but since most of this stuff does seem to be Alibaba type, so I mean, they have a designer there, so not taking anything away from him. But since <laughs> Ashley's life seems to be Alibaba, you know, she loves that. And I respect a girl or a boy, really. I respect anybody who loves a bargain. I'm an old Navy game myself. So I respect the Alibaba game personally. But uh, <laughs> it's just funny that these two out of all of the people on this show get a, a fashion line. Yikes. I know. I mean, I think that is the joke of it. I think they probably set them up for that, being like, okay, this will be a total disaster uh, because it's these two. But um, anyway, yeah, they have that because they're going to have a fashion show later this episode. So the episode opens up with Wendy FaceTiming her producer. Uh, she's really nervous because she's going to be shooting finally the pilot for her talk show that she's been talking about all season long her YouTube show. It's very scary, guys. You know, Ben actually had to talk me off a ledge before we did this today. Because I was like, Ben, I'm so scared <laughs> to go on YouTube. <laughs> it's gonna happen. He's like, Ronnie, you can do it. I'm like, yeah, if we spent the entire 50K, Ben, if we spent the entire 50K. <laughs> Ronnie, get out of bed. We're gonna do this. <laughs> Virtually held scary. my hand until I could get it together to come here, and here I am. I, I've coaxed you. I coaxed you out here. Um, I said, listen, Patty Lapone is waiting for you. And you're like, fine, I will show up for Patty. And then I had to break it to Ronnie that Patty Lapone was never here in the first place. Which is why I'm about to tell you. Karen and Ray go to the hot doctor. <laughs> can we can we set up all the scenes by doing that, please? <laughs> <laughs> and that was now great. to introduce the next scene, Miss Patty Lapone. <laughs> you have this coronary calcium score. It was bad last time. It was scary last time, but it's better this time. You've got no calcium, no calcium. <laughs> mm, that's great. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Doctor Patty. <laughs> Doctor Lapone. Um. So they go to their doctor, Doctor Jack Flyer, um, who I presume Karen picked because he's eye candy, because that's how Karen operates. Which, by the way, last week my fence blew down because I live in the country. That's just shit you say. Hey, Ben, you know what happened to me today? <laughs> a fence blew down. Was that when I was there? No. It was the week before. Oh. So I guess two weeks ago. I'm sure I told... Remember I was staring at him. I, we were talking about it on the show. Yes. I was staring at him out the window as he was working. Like yes. a total perv. Yes, I was like, yes. oh my God, look at that handsome guy. I heard a handsome guy off TaskRabbit. What a fucking tool that guy was. I mean, you should see the fence. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> we should brace this fence. I thought he meant with cement. He put a break like a big triangle taller than the fence down there and now i have a big triangle hanging off the fence <laughs> a triangle. my point is don't hire people for the eye candy okay look at their yeah. resumes first guys resumes are, are important so dr jack flyer 
I mean, who knows? Who knows what the maybe Karen is full of plaque, but you know, Jack Flyer is eye candy, eye candy doctor with bad diagnoses and readings of tests. Well, didn't she want to fuck the pilot too? That she took. Remember when she, she took Raven to the pilot school? That's where she started the eye candy thing. Where yeah, was season like, oh, two. Look, it's eye candy. Oh, the pilot mm. eye candy, and now she's at Doctor Jack Flyer. I mean, Ray, can you read signs, Ray? Because your wife's fucking this doctor. Maybe she thought she was gonna be. Um, getting like a heart test by um, the guy who plays Jack Reacher. You know that big guy? <laughs> that big guy that's like on all the talk shows right now? Just being big so and muscular. Cute. What is that guy's Richardson? name? Because I keep getting those shows confused. Jack Reacher and then what's there's Jack the other Reacher, one? Jack Ryan, and then there's Jack Reacher, Jack Ryan, and then what's the Keanu Reeves one? John Wick. And no, then there's also different. John Carter. Well, John, Car John yeah, Carter, John Wick, and John Carter are different. There's like Reacher, and then there's the other one on Amazon Prime with the guy from The Office. But that's Jack Ryan. Fans. It's Jack Ryan and Jack Reacher. Okay. But Jack Reacher guy, the Jack Reacher guy, Alan Richardson, he was on American Idol, and I'm like, you may be all big and muscular and an action star now, but I remember, you can secretly sing. He made it to Is Hollywood. He good. Week. He has like well, he I has remember a face that he smells something really stinky in the morning. He's yeah. Like, He's unhappy about something. I feel like I saw him at Volcano once, which I know sounds. <laughs> and non ironically, too. I feel like you were Volcano ironically, but Alan Richson was not. I've never gone to Volcano voluntarily. I'll tell you that much. And uh, I feel like I was there and he was there. Like, I, I don't know why. I just feel like whenever I think of Alan Richson, I think of Volcano. So I think I saw him. I remember going to a party once there. Now that I think, I went to the opening of a Volcano once. <laughs> I went to the opening of the volcano in Century City, and I think he was at that party. Well, there you go. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Of course, Alan Ripson was at the opening of the volcano. If anyone um, doesn't know way, what volcano is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, an, a, like a very generic Asian fusion restaurant, like a local chain here in Los Angeles. He's very cute, this Alan Richson. I think he's he's going to go somewhere. I love his smelly fart face. He's going to make it. Yeah. Okay, so this doctor tells Karen, okay, we know that your whole season has been about calcium, 5% calcium. Um, but guess what? Your your calcium score is good. And she just purses her lips. And she's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great. Well, I told that calcium. I am the calcium. <laughs> I feel like we missed some good Karen Huger joke when you're telling the story about your fence guy. <laughs> oh, you're right. I am the fence. You want me to ride the fence? Oh, I did ride the fence. I actually did. You put a Finally, triangle on me. <laughs> I don't know what it means to put a triangle on me, but you put one on me and I don't like it. You don't know what that means. It means like when they're, they're making a brace. So they put a triangle so it goes up against the fence. You screw it into the fence and then it's put into the ground. So it's oh. like bracing it, but... Like, dude, eventually someone has to buy this house. You can't sell it with a big fucking triangle brace on the side of the fix the fence, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking popsicle dude, sticks we gotta sell to this it. house, dude. Um, yes, that's so, how you have to talk to handymen because they're generally very big, straight guys. So you have to suddenly, I'm like this, hey. It's like I call Task hey. and I become more manly. And I'm like, hey, bro. All right, here's the problem with the fence. You know what, bro? I trust you. I trust you. I'm going to be inside. Just send me, shoot me a text when you're done. I'm sure it's all going to be great. And then he did send me a text when he's done. And I'm like, why do, why do I trust people? I trust mm. anyone who's straight acting because I'm like, they're manlier than me. And if I <laughs> say anything, that is going to offend their masculinity or any shade of doubt, they're going to throw keys at me and I'm going to have to catch. And that's the most terrifying thing. Is like, yeah, <laughs> you know? I know I, it's, it's fun. One, one of the perks about visiting Ronnie in Texas is that I get to see him code switch a lot. Um, when he, <laughs> amongst all the, the straight Texas people, like I forget where it was. We're like, thanks man. And I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, Ronnie do it. I mean, we all do it. That's well, part I'm of very straight when I'm not talking about Bravo Ben. You know, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very hetero acting. I'm very heteronormative yeah. when I'm not recording about Robert I like Schiff. to think I'm that way too, but sometimes I hear a recording of me and I am sassy McSasserson. So I think <laughs> I think I lost my code switch. Uh, okay, so um, next, Ashley is getting ready for her big GNA fashion show, which, by the way, went to the website. Still nothing is up there. They've got a couple of them, right. Kenzie's Child's. Uh, Christmas ornaments and a couple of shirts that say GNA, which somehow looks like Gran the way that they've written right. it because it's right. like GNA right next to each other over and over. And it right. looks like it says Graham. I'm sorry. You guys do better. Like make an effort. Mm. At least how could you have this huge platform 
and you're coming out with all of this shit. You're not making any of this stuff. How are you not selling it? I would have bought something. I didn't only go to the yeah. site to mock you people. I went to buy that cute pink Mylar um, jacket thing that they had there. I thought I would look really cute in that. And it's not for sale. Okay, but you can't mm -hmm. buy a shirt that says Gran a hundred times. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. yeah, it surprises me uh, why, like they've had a lot of time to get this together. Like, how do you not have your website available to take orders? I, I don't, I don't understand this. So uh, Ashley's working on that and she's talking about how um, she's like, well, the time has finally come for everyone to see GNA in action. And it has been months of stressing and designs and not really being a real fashion designer, just talking about it on TV. And then we see six weeks ago, they're like talking about it, about like what they're going to, you know, do and everything. And then we come and then we see like five weeks ago, they're picking out fabrics and then, um, you know, uh, <laughs> They're just being designers, being fashionistas, if you will. Yeah. They're very like, designers, we have five more minutes. High stitch. Like running around, a, running around a room of fabric. And then we meet the actual designer, Desmond, who I was, I was impressed that they gave Desmond some credit, you know? And yeah. Desmond was like, guys, we need advice on this. Okay, so I just want advice. We're going to flare out the bottom, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, we are going to flare out. That's a quite That's not a quite Just nod your heads. Yes, we are going to flare out the box because, you know, Desmond did all of this stuff. Now, should Desmond. he be proud of it? Desmond, I need some breathable materials if this is workout clothes. I don't work out, but from what I've heard about it, you need your skin needs to breathe. <laughs> you can't yeah. be putting Mylar balloons on people as an outfit, sir. Yeah, um, I would not be surprised if the reason there's no designs on the site is the, the age old tale that Desmond didn't get paid. And now he's taking all the designs for himself and it's a big fight because it's always the fashion designers on these shows it's always the 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 two-bit fashion designer who gets sold a bill of fame goods and then winds up you know getting crushed by the machine and takes his designs and leaves and then there's always a thing of like well everything was going well but but the designer just lost his mind and ran away i mean this is what always happens well, I guess we're. I guess we can tell, but you know what? They Desmond already made the clothes. You can't make him in charge of your shop right or whatever they. What's it called? The shop shop well or whatever the online shopping thing is. The self service yeah. shopping thing. Shopify. You know, Desmond can't do everything for you guys. No, he can't. I can drop um, Desmond. Jesus, leave the man alone. So next we go to Neca and um, her man to do sperm retrieval, which is one of the most awkward sperm retrievals. I've ever seen. I have to. Yeah. I have to give her credit. She hasn't made much of a splash on this show. No pun intended. Yeah. But um, the sperm retrieval might just save her ass because wow, I'm never gonna forget it. I know. So basically, um, they are gonna be doing some insemination because there was there was some talk over the past few episodes that like Ike wasn't really in favor of insemination because it's looked down upon in Nigerian culture. Yada yada yada. Uh, but in, but now he's like, okay, I'm down. So she's like, so do I get to help him? Do I get to help him uh, do this? They're like, yeah, sure. And they're like, just just know you can't use saliva or lubricants to do this. So basically, like, no blowjobs, okay? And then if you're doing a handy, it's got to be a dry handy <laughs> or saliva. Oh no, it can't be saliva. I literally just said that. So they go in for what's supposed to be a sexy time of extracting the sperm. And instead it's just like full of confusion and shuffling. And we just see all the sound people who are listening in just cracking up outside the door. Yeah. Cause you have to live to, you have to sit there and listen to someone bang in the bathroom. That's so weird, yeah. you know? And I like that they open the door and she's like, it's just a bathroom. What the fuck did you expect? Like a, a, a bed that shakes when you put quarters into it. You're at a fucking yeah. doctor's <laughs> office. Couldn't they do this at home? Like, wouldn't you just give people like a little ice chest and like a cup and be like, jerk off at home? Like, <laughs> why do they have to jerk off in your office? It's very creepy. And we're in like a, a period of time where I feel like people should be like, you know what? If our business model is asking people to come in and literally jerk off in our office, I think we need to rethink that because. <laughs> <laughs> People need to feel safe, you know? <laughs> people need people need to feel safe. How many people over the past five years have been fired for jerking off in their office? And now here you go. And people are like, you have to jerk off in this office if you ever want your dreams achieved. Like, what the hell? 
Isn't that how we got <laughs> into this mess? Uh, so they are futzing around, uh, trying to, they, 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 after like 15 minutes, uh, he finally comes into a cup or something. And um, now it's time to do the insemination. So they go through the process. Ike, Ike actually does the ultrasound because he's a doctor. And they, they look at, you see the sperm sort of dancing around and stuff. And, you know, the glories of modern medicine hap- unfurl before our eyes. <laughs> Watching the sperm <laughs> dance around. It was like the opening credits of Look Who's Talking, okay? It was a bunch of sperm uh, going through fallopian tubes uh, to the tune of the Beach Boys. Actually, they don't go through the fallopian tubes. They just go They just I don't go know how the that works, to be honest. Really, the only, the only time I was educated on that properly, because I went to Christian school, so they're like, Jesus does it, you know? You pray to Jesus, and then a baby comes out. So I, I didn't really understand until I saw the movie <laughs> Look Who's Talking where they have the opening of the sperm traveling through whatever it goes through the freeways or whatever, uh, to get there. So that's how I learned. So I just saw this. I just, it looked like a bunch of little bugs to me. I will say that modern miracle to me was watching Ike just come in like two seconds on demand. Like they were like, come. And he's like, done. How the fuck do you do that? I mean, to even get to the point where I, that's an option for me. I have to helicopter tap dance, pray, beg, Plead, offer it money, girl. <laughs> open some ice cream. It's a lot of. It's a, it's a. It's a dramatic experience for you. It's a lot. It's a lot harder than just going like, okay, <laughs> the end. The baby. Listen, Ike is a machine. All right. So now we go over to me and Gordon. They're gonna go uh, have another uh, therapy session. I'm not sure about this therapist. I have to say, I'm not sure about her. So uh, they go, and the therapist is like, so how's everything been for you all? And she's like, interesting to say the least. And Gordon's like, I mean, I've been perfect, of course. <laughs> and the therapist is like, perfection is impossible to achieve, so uh, I know that's false. I'm like, yeah, he was very obviously joking, therapist. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like nobody goes to this therapist because her office is so tiny and obviously like a next to the xerox machine you know what i mean <laughs> like she's earning her way back from being in trouble or something i'll bet she like maybe fucked one of the patients i don't know what her deal is but she's <laughs> obviously just like... had some kind of issues They're like is, are people banging next door They're like oh yeah that's the uh insemination office <laughs> i uh i did something i was late one too many times and i got sent to the office right next to the dissemination bathroom so i've actually just rented a rented some free space in the insemination office knock 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 no saliva you two i can hear you <laughs> it's not even my job to tell them that but at this point you know might I'm as well help where i can them. i'm just rooting for them at the end of the day <laughs> okay so, so they go through therapy this is super awkward because Here's this relationship we've watched for now, what, three years. Mia basically admits she's been with this guy for his money. She met him in the strip club. And, you know, he was out there shelling out $10,000 for a few minutes with her. And, like, who wouldn't want to marry that? You know what I mean? So he's a little gross, okay? But at the end of the day, he's a supporter. They get along fine. But I think it's easy to be like, well, whatever. You just married him for his money. Now that the money's gone... This is very disturbing to actually watch because I've be- I've come to like Mia over the years, you know, and I kind of like Gordon, and this whole thing is very disturbing. I don't really like it. I don't like that he she threatened to leave, so he drained her bank account, and it just seems like a scarier situation. Like she's just in this situation because she's scared. I mean, I don't know. The Mia's storylines are usually somewhat light and fun, and. This yeah, like when her story about being a foster child and growing up around drugs. You're and right. you know, that's true. Okay. <laughs> she really is just a light and fun. No, um, you're right. But I guess she's a light and fun person with, you know, uh, more serious background story. Right. There's but more. Yeah, she right. always seems like she's just like a kind of like a, a reality star doing stupid stuff. And then she actually has serious stuff going on. The whole that thing with takes Gordon. Me, uh, takes me off guard. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. For some reason. The whole thing with Gordon draining the bank account was alarming, uh, but also fully in line with the sort of behavior I'd expect from someone who essentially buys his wife, right? 
So um, I'm not saying that makes it okay, but it's like, it's consistent with, yep, this is like, Gordon's done a good job lately of being like, oh, I'm just sweet Gordon. But I don't know. I've always thought Gordon was a creep, to be honest. So um, Mia's saying, well, I think the, the, uh, there's talk about the, the D word. And Gordon's like, what's the D word? Divorce? Oh, it was never my consideration. Because he's doing that thing where he's all nice in therapy. I, he's like being all sweet and lovely in couples therapy. And she's like, well, I think I said this in my session last time I was here with you. And I'm like committed to Gordon through thick and thin, but not through poorness. So when I see counsel for divorce, it's because I just wanted to weigh out like all my options and see if there's like other like wealthy men I could like marry and stuff like that. And um, they talk about intimacy, and basically, they seem to have kind of an open relationship. I guess we're going to get into this later on this season from the previews. By the way, how long is this season? I feel like next season, it feels like next episode's got to be the last one because they tied up, they were tying up all sorts of loose ends this episode. It had a very season like penultimate episode feel to it. Okay, well, fingers crossed. But um, <laughs> she was, she was saying, um, in the preview, we've seen we see that they they are in a fight about her having an affair or something. But it seems from this like they have some kind of open relationship because she's saying, "Well, he's got a problem with intimacy," and so we find out that he doesn't want to bang a lot, and so she's allowed. They make it sound like she's allowed to go outside the marriage, right? Because he's like, "I've told you, you know, I." I'm okay with you needing a different kind of intimacy than I can give you, but you're not giving me the kind of intimacy that I need. Like when I she comes to bed, she's just on her phone looking at social media or doing something. Well, you know what? That is intimacy to some of us. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> what the hell? That is my kind That's of intimacy. That's very sexy. If you want to talk to me, like something on Twitter. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> follow me on Instagram. Unfollow me so that I can get all upset about it and then follow me again so I'll notice you. Okay? It's called love. And she's like, I'm not asking you to change. I just want you to be the man that I met. That's all, you know, wealthy. So this is when she talks about how um, she's like, you know, over the past few years, uh, there's been a lot of things to strain their marriage. She went through a health scare, financial difficulties with the family and business. And they're just not on the same page when it comes to their goals and what the future looks like. And she's just praying that like over the course of the next year, they can get to some sort of understanding. Yeah, and, um, you know, it's Mia, so you don't know what to take. Because Mia's full of crap, as we all yeah. know. <laughs> so, so you don't really know how it's being framed, but I want to see more. And I can't wait to see who she cheated with. I'm assuming the rapper guy, right? I am, I'm assuming so. I mean, was it, didn't she say she just got some good D, right? Doesn't she say that later in the episode, like sort of implying it was not Gordon's D? Yeah, well, you know, it's Mia. She's like, how dare you accuse me of, oh, I just got some good deeds from someone down the street. I would never. I'm not a stripper. Well, I met him at the strip club. Right. You know, or her, I had a health scare last season, her thing last season, her almost yeah. her health scare last. I and mean, we you know, it's a Kim Zolciak. What are you going to do? So then um, this, basically, this relationship is doomed. So the therapist yeah. is just kind of watching them talk, and Gordon's like, I feel like a plague. Well, Gordon, you know, I mean, that's what happens when people who had magic no longer have magic, okay? You were hot because you had money. Now you don't have money and you're less hot. You still get mm -hmm. everything you married her for. So, sorry, go get your magic back. That's what I have yeah. to say to you. Call Hogwarts, the, okay? The therapist, make, the therapist makes Gordon turn and like hold Mia's hands and like look into her eye and like the therapist is like, I want you to focus on your wife and share with her what you need from her. I'm like, what sort of therapy is this? This is like some friggin' like Dr. Phil, Montel Williams, Jenny Jones. This is like afternoon talk show kind of therapy right now. This is not what's gonna heal them with their issues. And so he does his whole spiel that I think you just said. And she's like, it's like, I need yeah. you to make time for me. I need you to be willing to listen to me and not make me feel like an afterthought. Get a job, Gordon, okay? <laughs> that's that's what you need to do. You need to get a job. Right now, this is not about your fee-fees, okay? Go get a job. And the yeah. therapist says like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm sorry that couch is so small, but um, maybe a little more space between you. You guys, I can hear gum chewing in there. No gum chewing. You do not want to be covered in bubble gum. <laughs> 
So speaking of therapy, we now go over to Candace's house where she is going to meet up with the one, the only Dr. Ken. He's back. He's back. He's really been such an effective therapist. I mean, look at Candace. Look how far she's come. She's gone from crying that her mom hit her in the head with a bag to... That clip kills me every single time. <laughs> My mother thought that would, would be appropriate in that situation was to take her purse and hit me in the head with it. Man, that's a clipboard. Please, that's a clipboard. <laughs> Fucking Candace. Also, who else has he been the therapist for? Has he um, been the, is it just Candace? I feel like he's done some someone on Potomac. I'm sorry, on Atlanta. I can't remember. Because there's Dr. Ken, but then there's also Dr. Jeff, right? Right. And Dr. I think Jeff Dr. was the Ken. one who's like, meanie, meanie. Oh. Meaning Dr. Ken was, Dr. Ken famously is with the, uh, another success story, Drew Sedora and Ralph. There we go. Yeah, Drew Sedora. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he's not on the cover of, you know, Psychiatrist Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is definitely a magazine. Yeah, so he's here. And, um, you know, this is an episode that really wants to teach people that if you have problems, just pretend to go to therapy a couple of times a year for a storyline. <laughs> yeah. Because these people have obvi quite obviously never been to therapy except for storylines. And Dr. Ken doesn't even try to hide it because Candace is like, here's what's going on with me. And then she unloads everything that's been happening in the past ever since she saw him last time. Therapy does not work when you just go one time, okay? They can't no. fix everything. That's why I stopped going. Once they told me you have to commit to it, that's when I was like, bye, I'm not coming to this. I told you my problem was commitment issues. And now you're telling me I have to commit in therapy. What the fuck kind of program is this? You obviously know nothing. Bye. So she was, Candace is like, yeah, we were talking about starting the process of, of, you know, having a kid at the beginning of last year. And I started working on the music and that pushed it. And then some things happened. And we see a flashback of how she had some lumps in her breast from a mammogram. And she's, she's, Candace is like, yeah, I'm saying to myself and my husband that I need to stop thinking that I, I think that I can't do multiple things at once. Da, 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 da. She's basically, like you said, just, just dropping everything on Dr. Ken right now. Um, and um, she's, you know, she's played with all sorts of anxieties and insecurities about becoming a mom. Did she wait too long? Was she too ambitious and wanted to do 5,000 things before motherhood and potentially uprooting my plans to become a mom at all? Like, oh, that's going through my mind and it's an unpleasant place to be. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I wonder sometimes if I'm using my career as an excuse to not have a baby. Is your mom, is Dorothy threatening to not pay for any more gigs at the city winery? Because that's what I'm getting from this. <laughs> I think Dorothy's like, Candace, I will pay for two more gigs with your band. And so she's like, okay, I'm ready to have a baby now. Yeah. Well, Dr. Ken's like, well, are you going to let fear rob you of motherhood? Because it sounds like that in some ways. That's what you're doing right now. You can ask, what's the most important thing to you at this stage today? What do you really want? So then Candace is fully, the triangle comes out and she's like, I think that's, I think that's what it is. Like, I want a baby. I want a child. I think about this like all the time, all the time. Ah, that's not ah. true. I mean, I'm not saying she doesn't want a child, but I think your real answer is a Grammy. Like, let's not. Just Grammy is a child. <laughs> She's gonna. She wants child. a child named Grammy. I mean, I don't know. Does she want to give birth to a Grammy? You do not want a child over a Grammy. I don't believe you. Okay, just say the Grammy. Okay. <laughs> and she's like, I don't deserve to be a mother. Well, I don't know if you've been to a food court lately, but that's not a prerequisite. Yeah, I'm about to say the bar is very low in terms of deserving to be a mother. <laughs> I don't know if you've okay. checked out a carpool line lately, but uh, <sighs> I don't know if you've seen any of the Real Housewives before. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if you watch your network, but uh... <laughs> but there are a lot of a lot of people that didn't deserve to be mothers, and guess what they raised? Reality stars. Yeah. Uh, so you know she's she's talking about that, and um, he's like, well, you know. Um, I think it. I think you're ready. And she's like, me too. I can't wait to tell Chris. 
So then everybody meets in a bar. Um, so this is the 10 minutes of hellos that I was cracking yeah. up about before. I mean, literally went on forever. Oh my this God. went on for so long. They are showing up. It goes on and on and on and on and on. And so they are gathering around and Mia's like, everyone have a seat. Welcome to the party. I know your party's on Friday now. And Giselle's like, yes, uh, GNA uh, is coming together. Uh, Mia girl, is she explaining what we're doing? Uh, and Mia's like, so I told you guys, I told you ladies that I met with the editor of a magazine. And then we see that she met with someone named Will Walters who is the editor of Monarch Magazine, which I feel like, did we ever encounter Monarch Magazine before? Or am I just thinking of noblemen from Orange County? Um, I don't know. Well, either way, Will Walters, he runs this magazine and it's a local magazine in the DMV area. And he wanted to discuss an opportunity to do this iconic spread representing the women who are trailblazers. So naturally you turn to which is why they Mia. called Mia. <laughs> I, love <him. laughs> I love him showing the, I love them showing the meeting with him and the initial meeting with him and Mia, where he's like, I want women who are on the forefront of things. I want women up here and things up here and just women getting things and women on the forefront, just winning things. And Mia's like, mm -hmm, so naturally you called me. <laughs> I owned to crack the back through my husband. Um, did a great job <laughs> on the living room remodel of a rental, which was also a great business decision that's paid off recently. Um, anything else? He's like, yes. And I want you to dress like Dorothy Dandridge. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> With the rest of the cast of the Housewives, of Real Housewives of Potomac. So she gathers everybody. And she tells them that they're going to have this photo shoot for this magazine about uh, pioneer black women and uh, or famous black. I don't know. Pioneer makes it sound like Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Like people are coming in on a wagon. I don't mean mm -hmm. it like that, but like, you know, uh, really famous black women that came before them. And it looks like a really good photo shoot, actually. Like they all get to. Yeah, uh, actually, Ashley is Dorothy Dandridge and looks beautiful. And she has her hair in her uh, testimonial. Mr. Yeah. Movie hair. So everyone gets to do this photo shoot, except for NECA. Uh, Mia basically is like, yeah, I actually let her know that she's not included in this opportunity. And we see that she's basically tells NECA like, yeah, it's just you're so new and you don't have any direct ties in the community. And, and but I told him like, she will, she will, but like, oh, well. I'm like, this is, this is basically, they weren't sure if NECA was gonna be just like a friend of or a full-fledged cast member. And they were thinking friend of, so they just were like, you can't be part of this. I think Mia was just pulling a power move, don't you? Because I don't think Will cares. I don't, Will literally. I mean, who cares about Will, who has... Do you think the leader of Monarch Magazine is really like, oh, you know what, we have to be picky. I mean, we yeah. just have to be picky. I don't think we can have one extra Real Housewife at our photo shoot. It is a weird. It was. It was a weird thing. I don't know why ties to to the Potomac community are so important um, for a photo shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Mia was power tripping on that one. Um, but who knows, you know, but she's like, don't worry, once your storyline about jerking your husband off in a bathroom next to a, a therapist's office uh, airs, you're going to be on the cover of every magazine in town. <laughs> well, you made the child go to Grand Dom school and now you now you don't even let her do the photo shoot. Well, she took it very well. So um, now Will enters and says hi to them all and they each have like little uh, binders which shows who they're going to be dressed as etc so we find out that um candace is going to be diana ross um which is cool and then giselle is beyonce um and karen is lena horn i love lena horn mm, yes and i am the horn i like <laughs> that they gave karen the aging one even though every one of these people is a historical figure and they've all aged and died by now <laughs> still <laughs> lena horn well in my memory every time i think of lena horn it's like yeah yeah just like a, <laughs> an older lady like what what did she used to be on when we were kids she would be a guest star on was it the muppets I, mean, <laughs> I don't remember she would 
I think Mavs she appeared on the Cosby Show. Out. I think she appeared on the Cosby Show a few times. I'm gonna put Lena Horn Muppets and see if it was her. Um, what was the name Stormy of the Stormy Weather? Oh, Sesame Street is what I would see her on. Mm. Um, okay, so let's which were Muppets, which were starring Muppets. Okay, yeah. everybody, it was Let's part of the universe. Back. But uh, yeah, Karen's <laughs> Lena Horn, Ashley is Dorothy Dandridge, Mia is Pam Greer, and Wendy is Cheryl Lee Ralph. Yeah, and Robin is Mariah Carey. Um, I so, feel like that's the biggest stretch. That was a bit of a stretch. It was a bit of a stretch. But, you know, hey, it could all work, <laughs> I guess. So uh, they do this whole thing, and um, that's it's, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> So then we go over to uh, Robin and she's doing she Robin and Juan are meeting with a realtor at a commercial space for her glow 30 franchise. I had forgotten that Robin actually is interested in opening up a glow like a it's like a uh, it's like a how do you describe it's not a med spa, but it's like she a place. She describes it. It's a membership facial oh, facility. It is really... So okay. you pay a membership and you go get facials and you glow and, for 30 um, seconds. Hopefully Ike is working there because he can give you a facial on demand within <laughs> five seconds. Uh, yeah, so it's a facial place, and she goes in there with one, and she's like, okay, here's what I envision. I envision offices there, and then rooms there, and then a hallway here. Okay, go outside. <laughs> and then the realtor is like, okay. And did you notice the realtor just check Robin on her way out? She, like, body checked her. She, like, looked her no. outfit up and down. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, keep your eye on your own outfit, ma'am. Okay? You're in no place to judge. <laughs> you look like a cocktail napkin. Now go outside. Uh... Robin's like, okay, so I have a vision for Glow 30, and it was all that I meant it to be. I have a vision for Glow 30, and it was all that I meant. It. I really am Mariah. I really am. Oh, <laughs> dream it's... facial come, dream facial come, facial me. Rub me up, rub me down, clean my pores out. Okay, Robin, thank you. Got a little too far with the Mariah. All I want for facials is you. <laughs> sweet, sweet that. facial baby. <laughs> okay, so she sits down and has a talk with Juan, and she's like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. And he's reading a, um, he's like, we can do it. It's going to be great. And he's reading a slogan on the wall. She's like, wait a minute. Did you just read that slogan on the wall? <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> and then we see um, that she's very serious about this. And you know, guys, because she had a meeting with uh, Mia and Gordon about it. Where right. she asked them their opinion. I was like, is this supposed to lend credence to this being a good idea because you know what's going on with their business, right? Yeah, was this when they were doing their pasta class uh, earlier yes. in the season? This is one of the best scenes because Mia was like, so Juan, what about the rumors that you're banging that girl? He's like, oh, <laughs> I don't like talking about that stuff. Uh, so yeah, um, so they're excited to open up this Glow 30 thing. And uh, the Robin all mentions she's getting a call from Giselle or she gets like a text and she mentions that um, Giselle's dad is in the hospital and um, uh, Robin calls and Giselle says that she's hanging in there, et cetera. And the producer asks Giselle, like, hey, can you talk about what's happening with your dad? And we can see Giselle's getting choked up and she's like, we can talk about that da later. Ah. So we find out that he has brain cancer, which is crazy and so sad you know we love that guy on this show yeah um so uh, that's sad so she's talking about how she's with him and taking care of him but they have the gna launch party coming up so what's gonna happen and then we go over to i think the business that's probably going to do the best out of all of these wendy's youtube pilot yeah it's actually it turns out to be pretty good she um She's it's it's the day of the sh of the shoot and she's like I finally made it to the big day I can't believe it's here when you're a commentator you have the privilege of giving your five minute take on something and leaving but when it's your show the success depends on whether people tune in to me me Wendy so then um 
she has gone over her budget, which was 50K. And yeah. then we see, uh, she's like, I am so proud to be in the situation where I've got myself. And then we cut to her being like, Eddie, you're going to give me $50,000? Thanks. <laughs> and um, then she's saying, you know, the theme of my pilot was black girl magic. So she has April Ryan, who is a White House correspondent for the Grio, and Jasmine of the Jasmine brand, and uh, Nikidra Robinson, who's the CEO of Black Girls Vote, and Lindsey Granger, who is a host of Daily Blast, and, the, and she was on The View, et cetera. So she has like a, a, a very strong panel of people for her pilot. And they it looks like, by the way, also they're still using that penthouse or whatever it was, not penthouse, the townhouse. townhouse that her friend had brought her to earlier in the season. So they basically, um, we yeah, I just wonder if that lady's pissed. She's like, wait a minute, you fired me, but you still use the penthouse I found. You. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, it was, we sort of see a montage of them all kind of like talking, uh, like, you know, about topics. And it looked actually pretty good. It looked like it was well shot, good lighting, good engagement. So, you know, it, I'm I'm with you. This does look like it'd be the most successful thing to come out of the season. Well, honestly, I was being sarcastic, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look it didn't look terrible. Here's what I will say: uh, I think it did look good too. I think their production quality and everything looked really good. Not that I'm a pro. Like, what the fuck do I know? Look at our production quality. Like, we're ridiculous. We're just on webcams. <laughs> I will say on YouTube, she can't spend that much money. You're like, oh, yeah. that's ridiculous. Having that huge of a staff and all of that and all of those yeah. people there, that's that dream's got to die real quick. Okay. <laughs> Saint that kind of business. It's the kind of business to slap it together for $5 and throw it out there. You know, also ticky talky. Yeah. Also, good luck booking four guests every single episode. Hello. It yeah. She went really big thing. for these first ones. But, um, you know, I think once she just like relaxes it and spends less money and just, you know, gets a webcam, <laughs> she's, yeah. she's, she's going to see a profit. Uh, so then we go to um, the GNA fashion show. Dun, dun, dun. It's and, finally here. Um, what's that? It's finally here. <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for. GNA Gran, the fashion show. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Run, crack up. So um, Ashley is getting her hair done. She's talking to Desmond and she's sat, talking about how excited she is for everything. Um, and Giselle walks in and gives a hug. And, you know, they're all very warm to her because they understand what she's been going through. She's been up and down from Atlanta with her dad, you know, dealing with her dad, being in the hospital and everything. And uh, Giselle is just very thankful that Ashley has pick like you know Giselle was not able to really be present for all the stuff with GNA so she's just been really happy that Ashley has picked up all the slack and uh and you know really risen to the occasion yeah so she's like yeah you know I'm really excited to finally have this moment because I've talked to all the girls about it and we get a clip to them on vacation in the van of Ashley telling Candace and Wendy like oh my gosh we're starting a line and this is going to be at leisure and Candace is like um you and Giselle are going to create clothes and Wendy's <laughs> like is this an April Fool's joke like and subscribe <laughs> So uh, they're all really supportive. We know <laughs> we know that Ashley is about to get tons of support rolling in off the chain. And um, then Ashley and Giselle are getting ready for the show. Uh, and Karen comes. And she's like, I know there better be some more days. I know that because I, <laughs> guess what, ladies? Hold on. Everybody, Dr. Flyer has spoken. I am calcium free. Calcium free. I know everybody's been worried about that, so. Season's ending. Zero <laughs> calcium. That's right. The only plaque that I have is Woman of the Year, courtesy of Ray. 14 <laughs> years in a row. 0% plaque, 100% fence. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Hi. I'm the anti hero for plaque. It's me. Um, so Karen is like, uh, I may be like, plaque free, but that doesn't mean I will not order tartar sauce with these orders. Because <laughs> hmm? <laughs> now we got bad plaque. 
Um, so Karen is, uh, she goes up to Giselle and, and hugs her and is like very warm and everything. And Giselle's saying there's surgery tomorrow and Karen's, you know, she's like, just pray tomorrow. She's, oh, I'm already praying. I started praying when I found out I had no plaque. I said, if I can't pray for my own plaque, then I will pray for whatever else is happening on in this world. So the praying has already begun. So uh, she actually says some very kind words about Giselle and she's saying how she really could see that Giselle's been crying and, you know, that like, you know, Giselle's been a real trooper. So then we get my favorite segment, people arriving. Wendy, da -na 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 -na. slow motion Wendy walking. Wendy, oh my God, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hey, Wendy, you look gorgeous. Thank you. You also look gorgeous. Robin showing up. Da -na -na -na. Literally another 10 minutes of people squealing hello to each in. other. <laughs> and walking in. <laughs> and then like, the um, big surprise of the episode, Mama Sheila showed up. And Ashley's like, I thought you weren't going to come. And Sheila's like, I wasn't, but I could never not show up for my daughter. And, you know, Sheila's thinking this is going to be a big tear-jerking moment for the audience. And she's being shot from the back. Just right. barely. They're like, oh, we're in the middle of a people arriving scene, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most important sequence of the week, so we're going to have to keep on going. <laughs> this is pretty long. So so here comes Candace. Candace shows up. And then Deborah. Deborah's back, everyone. They're pulling – clearly, this is the point where the producers realize this season is faltering. They've realized it a while ago, but now they're like, we got to pull out all the stops. So we're bringing Deborah back into the mix. And so by Deborah pull out all the there. stops, we mean do as little as possible. <laughs> Bring yeah. Ashley's mommy friend from the park over to yeah. literally physically accost somebody. It's a sad day. So, it's a sad day in Potomac. Sad day. So Deborah shows up. And Wendy is like, am I surprised that Ashley invited Deborah? No, Ashley is messy. So she would she would welcome the, and invite the opportunity for her to be here. So then we um, we see some flashbacks of last season of Deborah starting shit about Happy Eddie, etc. And um, more hellos. <laughs> more people coming in. Um, it doesn't seem to end. So then um, we see uh, the Muppet go up and say hello to Wendy, and Wendy's fake with her. And it's like, hello, how are you? And she's like, that was called fakeness right there. Why can subscribe? So then well, – um, It was a whole clip, by the way. They made it a cliffhanger that when, Wendy was talking to a random lady, and then then Deborah comes up to give her a hug, give the lady a hug, and then she goes in to give Wendy a hug. And it's like goes to commercial, like, oh, what's Wendy going to do? And when it comes back, Wendy just gives like – a little hug and moves on. I was like, really? That was it? You may as wait for that? <laughs> yeah. They actually freeze framed it and turned everything red. Like, dun, dun. <laughs> we'll <be back. laughs> so then um, everyone, let's see, they all start to sit down and say hello some more, you know? And um, Robin's like, so when are we going to see photos from the shoot? And they start talking about all the pictures and how good they looked. And now it's time for the fashion show. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashley and Giselle present Gran. Gran yeah. Fashions. And then the ladies uh, watch this fashion show. Now, here's one thing I will say. Even though we know they had a designer, I believe that these outfits were designed by these two because they're terrible. <laughs> Yeah. One of them is a pink Mylar robe that I actually wanted to buy for myself just to say I had it, really. Not because it was cute. What did you think of these fashions, Ben? Oh, terrible. I didn't like them. I mean, I'm not much of an – I don't know my athleisure very well. I don't know what makes for good athleisure. But for sure, I couldn't imagine any of these being worn to the gym. But also, by the way, I felt like I couldn't get like a long enough look at any of them. I felt like the editing was annoyingly fast. I wanted to have some sort of like true lengthy runway moments. And I was like, I, I wanted to kind of like soak it in because it all looks it all looks so terrible, but I, I needed to be able to see the terribleness a little bit longer so I could form some better opinions about it. Well, um, they were bad. And here's why. We've been set up by some very good fashions. And that was the She by Sheree. Right. Of course. The She by Sheree runway line. Classic. That was actually really good. I mean, none of that ended up being released because, as you mentioned earlier, Sheree 
didn't pay the guy or whatever, or was acute, allegedly didn't pay the designer or whatever was happening with that. So she ended up only releasing a couple of things. She herself bought off Alibaba, but the actual show is really good, I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one was just, it was chaotic. It was, it was also like, it all felt so rinky dink. It was like they were in some sort of suburban bar doing a fashion show. It just was all kind of sad. I know at one point Wendy got really upset because, um, one of the models was wearing an outfit that was like, it was like something tucked into pants, but it showed like your sides. And she was like, you know what? I wore that and they made fun of me for wearing that. And now it's in her line. And Wendy was all upset, but the difference was that then they showed the clip from three, two or three years ago, and it was right after Wendy had gotten her new boobs, and they just were all surprised that Wendy had had a complete change of wardrobe when she had been more conservative the season before. And face so, and body, because that was when yeah. she, she came back with the most intense season two glow up of anybody ever. Yeah. She had like a new face, new boobs, a mommy body lift, or, you know, whatever she did. She did the whole thing. And Robin was being gel. And, and the rumors were that Eddie was fucking around. And so they were accusing her of doing all of this to keep her husband, which, you know, karma kind of smacked both your asses on that one, really, in the end. But, um, yeah, that was pretty shitty. But Wendy's still just like, oh, really? It's all be now they're selling my outfit? At the no, they're not. And that wasn't yeah. their point. And I don't even like Robin and Giselle. But wendy's coming in here so dour just <laughs> it's just like so sour about every little thing and then they're sitting there making fun of her making fun of all the clothes and i don't know it's just it's, it's not fun it's yeah not fun. yeah so um which by so the, the way fashion... they have every right to not like these people okay yeah i'm not taking away the right to not like them but it's just like okay i mean at least make it fun just not like they're stealing your outfit from three years ago like let it go lady so then um, she, Giselle is, um, so now they're all dissing their collection, right? Wendy's like, yeah. well, what's up with these clothes? Are these supposed to be workout clothes? And she goes, I guess imitation's the greatest form of flattery. And Karen's like, oh, well, that one's good. I'm, I'm going to the grocery store in that one. And Kiarna, who's there, is saying that it has Alexander Wang vibes. And Candace goes, Alexander Wang doesn't give you yeast infections. <laughs> So um, then there's just uh, Candace says, I mean, it's it's a very it, it, it's all like a very elevated Alibaba. <laughs> so uh, and they all are kind of like, yeah, it's not it's heavier on the leisure side than the workout side. But but Robin's like, but I'm very proud of my putting a collection together. And Mia's like, yeah, it's very nice. So the people who are friends with them are basically trying to put a positive spin on it. And everyone else who isn't friends with them is like, yeah, this is garbage. This yeah, is all garbage. This sucks. <laughs> um, so then let's see. So Ashley gives a speech, like thanking everybody. And then um, Giselle, you know, cries and, and talks about her dad a little bit. And thanks Ashley for pulling everything together while she was away. And then um, Mia tells Candace and Wendy, she's like, guys, you know, Giselle's going through a lot right now because her dad is headed into surgery. And Candace says, I'm sorry to hear that. And um, Candace is like, but here's my thing about that. You know, um, I can wish people and their loved ones well from a distance. And that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and then Wendy's like, well, when my mom was having surgery and my mom was in the hospital, you guys were dragging me and my mom. Oh, please do not compare your mom's thing to someone's dad having the brain cancer. Your mom's <sighs> 10 minute. Wasn't it wasn't her mom's thing elective surgery also? Her mom's thing was an elective surgery that Wendy it... got caught trying to make a big deal that her own mom would not make a big deal on camera. You know, right? It was a ten-minute elective surgery <laughs> yes. versus Giselle's dad who has brain cancer. And Wendy tried to make it like you guys are coming for me when my mother, my poor mother, is in the hospital. She could die any moment. Yeah. And her mom's like, "Oh yeah, I went in for elective surgery. I was in there ten minutes." You know, Wendy's Wendy ridiculous. And here's the thing hard. with Wendy: I agree with Wendy on most everything she's mad at these people about. She has every right to be, they're assholes to her. And I'm really kind of on her side with all of that. She's just not fun. Wendy's not fun and she just can't get over anything and she's not fun shade, it's just mean. Like the guy has brain cancer, dude. Yeah, I, I, I just feel, I'm just concerned that Wendy may be like, she may have expired as a real housewife. I don't know if she's offering anything new or interesting. And I say that as someone who's who has historically been a Wendy fan, when especially during times when people did not like Wendy. 
but um, I just am not sure if she, I just, I don't know. I feel like she's kind of lost her magic. But anyway, Giselle and Ashley join everyone um, in the seating area and they give a toast to GNA and all the ladies start dancing and they start pour, they're pouring each other some champagne. And, um, you know, Giselle's just reflecting. Giselle has to go off to her flight to Atlanta and she's like, She's like, this is all happening very fast, and she just needs to get through the day. She just wants to get to her dad. So it sort of seems like the episode's over, but anyone who's watched the previews knows that there's still some more happening, and anyone who's watched, seen anything on TMZ from several months ago knows something happened. So finally, the cameras go down, but the microphones are still recording. And um, someone is saying, I think Ashley is like, so the, the cameras are down, right? The cameras are down? So the cameras are down, right? The cameras are down? And they're like, yes, yes, we're wrapped. So then Deborah decides to start a fight. Now this was the biggest shocking thing to me because the cameras were down. So what's Deborah doing? Cause she's only yeah. doing this for camera time, right? Did she just not know that the cameras went down? She may not have known. Cause this is so Deborah to misfire and pull a Muppet <laughs> move like this when the cameras yeah. just went down. I mean, that shit's funny. Yeah. Like Deborah's trying so hard and being so thirsty to get a moment on TV. And then she does it after the cameras went like stupid. So we hear her say, Candace, is there anything that you and I need to talk about? Bah! And Candace is like, uh, uh, the help is talking to me. The help, get the help away from me, please. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you called me Sesame Street. And Karen's like, I'm Lena Horne. Stop me. <laughs> you didn't say any of that in front of me. You didn't say any of that in front of me. And Karen's like, it's not the place. It's not the place. Hey, and Deborah's she's not friends with you. She doesn't have to say it in front of you. And you didn't call, you didn't call her husband, you didn't call Wendy and all these people uh, cheaters in front of them either. You did it behind their back, Deborah, ma'am. Yeah, so Deborah's like, but you don't have anything to say in front of my face, though. But when I'm in front of you, you don't want to say anything. You don't want to say anything when you're when I'm in front of you. Da -da 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 -da. And then we just hear voices going, stop, 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 stop. And then there's like. So this is pretty cut and dry. And the videos that have been released, they're all cell phone videos. Um, but what's been released is slightly confusing. You can't really see who's starting what because it's not shot properly, right? Right. But now it's pretty clear what happens. You know, Deborah just comes in and tries to start, like, physically attack somebody to get on TV. It's fucking pathetic. And Candace, too, because I think she knows that Candace already has a history, so Candace will probably get blamed. And yeah. she came for Candace. Candace didn't do anything. In the video, you see Candace, someone throws something at her or something, and she grabs a bottle off the table. <laughs> Candace <laughs> grabs a bottle and gets ready to swing it. But then they're like, Candace, don't. don't. She's like, okay. Candace. Like, she gets a hold of herself and does not swing the bottle but even if she had um justified i mean who does that who fucking does that and you're also yeah. someone else's job this is not your job ma'am i mean nice try but yeah. get the fuck out of here messy messy ashley trying again get better people to get better agents of mess ashley and honestly it's not your job you're at someone else's job deborah and if you wanted to make it your job you would have done it when the cameras were on yeah dummy you really messed it up you really messed it up. You really, messed it you up, really Deborah. like we were. We really needed something to look forward to, and you really messed it up for us. Okay. Well, yeah, we've been looking forward to this the whole season, and this is it. It's like not even lead up. It's just some B string tries to go for it and and fails miserably. It's like yeah, you wait an entire season to watch Hollywood Week or not even Hollywood Week on American Idol, like the prelim rounds. You know what I mean? Just watching yeah. people bomb. Like, we didn't yeah. need to wait the whole season for this, Deborah. You saw, get Deborah off the TV. Boo, Deborah, boo. But it, again, it also speaks to the failure of the whole season that, like, here in the final stretch, they had to, br first they brought in Jacqueline to try to, like, spice things up last week, and that didn't do anything. So now they brought Deborah this week. So they're trying. They're trying to throw they're anything trying. at the wall. They're trying just, anything except anything useful. It's just kind of ironic that somebody who's been called Sesame Street so many times still can't read. Mm, the sadness wow. the sadness wow. goodbye deborah r.i.p deborah all right everybody well thanks for watching uh assuming next week is the season finale we will be back for that uh thanks so much for being with us uh go get tickets for our la show and our european shows and videos and bonuses and all that over at watchwhatcrappens.com we will talk to you next time bye, bye everyone bye.